Today I want to talk about something called the harmonic triangle and this triangle is due to Leibniz and it's a little bit related to Pascal's triangle. So if you recall Pascal's triangle has like an outer triangle of ones and then after that you build every term lower by taking the sum of the two terms above it. And there are a lot of well-known properties of the Pascal triangle. For instance, the entries are known as binomial coefficients. If you take the sum of a row, you get a power of two. If you take a sum of some sort of diagonal, you get Fibonacci numbers and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of really beautiful properties of Pascal's triangle. So the harmonic triangle is devised somewhat similarly, but with non-integer rational numbers, or well, there's one integer there, and that starts at the top. So you start at the top with the number one, and then your outermost terms of your triangle here are reciprocals of natural numbers. So we'll have a one half here and a one half here, and then working down, We'll have a third here on the outside and a third here on the outside. Now we have to decide what to put in the middle here. And so what goes in the middle is not the sum of one half and one half. Instead of the sum going down, the sum goes up. So this number right here must add with this number right here, one third to give us one half. And symmetrically, the number that we put here must add with one third to give us one half. So in other words, this number right here, which we'll enter in, has got to be one half minus one third. So that's three sixths minus two sixths. So that gives us one sixth. So that finishes off this second row. And now we continue to work down. So again, we start with a quarter on either side. And then we want to think, well, this number plus one quarter must equal one third. So what needs to go there? Well, it's got to be one twelfth. And then we need this number, one twelfth, plus this number must equal one sixth. So that gives us another twelfth. So we have something like that going on. And then we could work down further if we wanted to. So we would have one fifth here. And now we need this number plus one fifth must equal one quarter. So this needs to be one quarter minus one fifth. So one quarter is five twentieths minus four twentieths. That is one over 20. So that's the number that goes right there. And then likewise, symmetrically, the number one over 20 must go here as well. Keeping in mind that the one fifth out here is a little bit off the board. Then we have to fill in what goes in the middle here. So we need this number right here to add with one over 20 to give us one over 12. In other words, this has gotta be one over 12 minus one over 20. So one over 20 is the same thing as five over 60 minus three over 60 is two over 60. So that means the number right here is one over 30. And then you could work down further and further and further. Just keep in mind what the rule is. So the rule is that this entry plus this entry must equal this entry. So whatever goes here must add with whatever's here to give us one over 20. And then likewise, whatever's here must add with its neighbor to hit one over 30 and its neighbor on this side to hit one over 20. So let's see if we can put this together into some sort of rule. So the rule here is that, well, like I said, the first entry of every row has to be a reciprocal of a natural number. So let's say we're at the mth row. So the first entry of the mth row is one over m. Notice the first entry of the first row is one. The first entry of the second row is half, one over two. The first entry of the third row is one over three, so on and so forth. So that means HM1 is gonna be one over M. So let's just maybe put this into words. This is the first entry of the mth row. And then how do we build our recursion? Well, let's recall that our rule is that the 
terms below a certain number add together to give us this number. So that would be something like this. H M N minus one plus H M N equals H M minus one N minus one. So let's just kind of sketch this out here. So if we're looking at a big copy of this triangle, this term right here would be in the nth row and it would be the n minus first term. This term right here would be in the nth row and it would be the nth term. And then these guys are gonna sum together to give us the guy that's above it, so the entry above it, which is the m minus first row and the n minus first entry. So it leaves us with something like that. But generally we like recursions that work backwards instead of forwards. And so that gives us some motivation to solve for this HMN so that it depends on something in the same row but has a previous entry or something in a previous row. So solving, that tells us that we have H M N equals H M minus one N minus one minus H M N minus one. And between this thing right here, which is like our seed for each row, and this recursive rule right here, that gives us all the information that we need in order to build this harmonic triangle. Okay, so now that we've got this written up, let's prove a couple of properties. So from the defining properties of our harmonic triangle, we were able to write it kind of succinctly using these rules. So for all natural numbers m, and then all other natural numbers n that are between one and m, we have h m one is one over m, so that gives us everything on the left-hand side of this triangle. And then h m n is h m minus one n minus one minus h m n minus one. And that's like a rewritten version of this rule where we take two terms lower in the triangle, add them together and get a term, term that's above the triangle, which we use to build this thing out. Now we're gonna prove the following claim. So I'll state it right here just as a summation, but then we'll look at what's happening geometrically. So we have the sum as m goes from n to infinity, so it's an infinite sum, h m n is h n minus one n minus one. Okay, so we can visualize this over here in our triangle as follows. So it's adding up infinite diagonals and getting the term which is directly up and left. So in other words, if we add up all of these numbers on this diagonal, we get this is equal to one. So one, one half plus a sixth plus a twelfth plus a twentieth plus whatever goes down here will be equal to one. Then likewise, we could go along this diagonal as well, and those will add up to the one right above it and to the left. So in other words, whatever this is, plus one over 30, plus one over 12, plus one over three, is equal to one over two. And this extends down all the way to the right. Okay, so let's maybe see how we might prove this. And in fact, by our construction up here, this is actually a fairly quick proof. Okay, so let's take this left-hand side. We have the sum as m goes from n to infinity of h, m, n. And now I'll do two things. I'll first apply my recursion as defined up there. And second, I'll change this infinite sum into a limit of a finite partial sum. So I'll say this is the limit as m goes to infinity of the sum as m goes from n up to capital M of h m minus 1 n minus 1 minus the sum as m goes from 1 up to capital M of h m n minus 1. So again, an infinite sum is just defined as the limit of the partial sums. That's why we were able to do that. And then I applied our recursion up here. And now from here, we'll re-index this second sum. So the index that we're summing over, which is the m index, 
matches with the previous sum. So in order to do that, we'll take m and replace it with m minus one. Okay, that's good. But now let's see what that does to our limits of summation. So when m minus one is equal to n, then that means that m is going to be equal to n plus one. So that's the lower bound here. And then when m minus one is equal to capital M, then M is equal to capital M plus one. So that's how our bounds of summation change. And then this guy right here will be replaced with M minus one. All right, so let's summarize that on the next uh, line. So we have the limit as M goes to infinity of, now I'm actually gonna take the first term out of this sum, just it'll be useful for the next step. So this is gonna be h n minus one, n minus one, that's our first term, plus the sum as m goes from n plus one up to capital M of h m minus one, n minus one. And then I have minus the sum as m goes from n plus one up to, well, capital M plus one, but what I'll do is I'll take out the last term there. So I'll say this goes to capital M of H M minus one N minus one and then minus the very last term of this re-indexed sum, which is H capital M and then N minus one. So that's what we're left with. But now let's note that some stuff cancels. This sum and this sum cancel as they've been re-indexed to each other. And then we're just left with the term that we wanna end up with from the claim here, our statement, and then minus this other term, which has a limit attached to it. Okay, so let's maybe cancel these out. So this is where we left ourselves off. I canceled those sums out. Now we're ready to do our last step. And that step is taking m to infinity. Well, let's first note that this is in the mth row, the capital mth row, and the largest term in the nth row is one over m. You can very clearly see that here. So the largest term in the first row is one, the largest term in the second row is half, the largest term in the third row is a third, and so on and so forth. So that gives us the following nice inequality. So we have zero is less than h capital M n minus one, which is less than or equal to one over m. Okay, nice. But now we're taking capital M to infinity, which means this term right here will trend off towards zero, but then by the squeeze theorem, that tells us that our leftover term here will also trend off towards zero, leaving us with only this leftover, which if we bring down, we'll see that we have completed our identity. Okay, so maybe I'll leave you guys with a little bit of a homework problem, which is to prove a certain closed form for the entries from this harmonic triangle. So a nice follow-up like homework type problem involving this Leibniz harmonic triangle would be to prove this closed form formula. And that is that the m nth entry here is one over n times the binomial coefficient m choose n. And how would one do that? I think maybe the best way is just to verify that this binomial coefficient object here satisfies the same recursion that defined our entries from our harmonic triangle. So in other words, you just have to verify that this equation holds for all appropriate m and n, which I bet you could do with induction or maybe just with straightforward brute force calculation. And that's a good place to stop. Thank you.